Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start today's video with a story about a daring homeowner who decided to take on a hornet's nest by himself, refusing professional help due to the cost. This tale not only involves a battle against nature's aerial assailants, but also serves as a humorous reminder of why sometimes it's best to leave certain tasks to the experts. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Client tries to lowball on hornet nest removal, does it himself, and tries to sue afterwards. Not too much of a long one here, but had a call today to take care of a wasp nest and refused to pay what we charge, so did it himself with hilarious results. Well, for me at least. He called in and was complaining that he had this wasp slash hornet's nest and they were bothering him for over 20 minutes. Find a customer who, when they start talking, will not stop or let you get a word in edgewise. Turned out it was hornets he was dealing with and finally got him to shut up when it came to talk about the cost and treatment. Me equals me, C equals client. Me. Well, that's interesting to hear about your life, C. So the cost for treating a wasp nest is X dollars, and if the tech can, then we'll remove the nest if it's safe to do so. C. Wait, how much? No way I'm going to pay that much for wasps. I won't pay it. Me. Well, I understand that, but it can be a trick to deal with wasp nests, especially during hot days like we're having now, and it's wasp slash hornet season, so they're very active. Added to the fact that it's a hard to reach spot. The nest from how he described it was about 20 feet off the ground built under the roof of his house, meaning you would have to go up a ladder with the gear and spray the nest while the wasps would be stinging the crap out of you, then get back down again. C. Well, I'll pay him half the money at most. Me. No, we can't do that. It's going to be X dollars. It's going to be a risky job. C. I don't care. You're asking for too much. I can do it myself, you know, with a can of Raid. Me. Well, you can try but we have trained technicians that have specialized equipment and chemicals. The cost is based on the time it takes to spray a hornet's nest and the amount of chemical to be used. If you try to treat it yourself, you'll get stung and it won't end well. C. Oh, don't give me that rubbish. Fine. I'll give him 75 bucks and no more. That other pest company, pest company name here, is doing it for 70 bucks. Me, knowing no company could charge that little. Well, then go to them for $5 cheaper than Mr. C. C. Hey now, don't talk to me like that, because of your attitude, I'm paying you $60 for it, not a red penny more. Me. Okay, um, no C. It's fully priced or nothing at all. C. No, I can do it myself. I know your type. You want to rip people off. Well, not me, bucko. I'll do it myself, and I'll do a better job than you ever could. Me. Well, by all means, you can try yourself if you want to be stung badly. Please call us back if you change your mind. C. You know what? F you and F your company. I'll do it myself. Hangs up. All this happened in the morning around 8 a.m., and he called back about 10 minutes ago, not very happy at all. Turns out that disturbing a hornet's nest during a hot day with zero protective clothing isn't a good idea. Me. Hello, this is M. How? C. You son of a bee! I got stung all over, and I didn't even get close to the nest. I'm suing you. Me. Hello? Is this C? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I did inform you not to try yourself. C. No, you hear me. I demand you pay me the dollars you said it was and for my treatment. I didn't even get halfway to it, and they were stinging me. Me. Yes, hornets can be very aggressive, and I'm sorry you got stung, but we won't be paying you anything. You said you could do it yourself, and you did. C. Now listen here, you young crap. I only did it myself because you were trying to charge me so much. I'm stung all over. And now I have hundreds of the yellow effers flying all over my backyard. What the hell are you going to do? Me. Well, we can come out if you like. It won't be for today. How about sometime next week? C. Next week? That's it. I'm suing you for all you're worth, you son of a bee. I got stung all over, and it's your fault. Me. Okay, well, take care. Hang up on him and go back to work. It's too early for this rubbish. He tried calling back a few times, but I'm ignoring him. Phoned a few other pest people I know, and it seems that he has a reputation of being an a-hole to deal with and has been blacklisted by most of them, 
as in never wants to pay what they quote him and always tries to lowball them even further by saying the job's not done right or calling them on non-existent damage to his property. Usually, this would be a learning lesson for people on why it's sometimes necessary to pay and have things done professionally. Given that he thought he had any kind of legal grounds to sue you, it makes me think he didn't learn anything. And our second story. Customer thinks he knows more about freight than my company who's done it for 40 years. So a little background. I work for a logistics, packaging, and warehousing company that delivers freight all over the world. We have lots of customers who have issues with getting material in time to keep their production going, and when there's an issue with material, they usually listen to us since we know how to get something from A to B quickly. We have one customer who forgot to order material and now was close to shutting down his production. Fortunately, the supplier, who was in another country, had material on hand to deliver. We notified the customer that we could get material to him before shutting down his production, but we would have to ship this immediately so as to not delay his production. Now, since our company understands the needs of our customers, we usually just ship material if we know it's needed and we can't wait for approval. This is the exchange that happened with me and the logistics manager, LM, logistics manager, customer, me, some guy who knows nothing about freight, PM, purchasing manager, customer. Since this material is also in another country with a time difference of about eight hours, you don't really have a lot of time to talk to people to get things moving. Day one, LM, I need dimensions, weight, and also some quotes so I can make a decision on how we want to move this, me. I can try to get you that, but because you need it in a few days and because of customs and the time difference, we really need to get this moving immediately. LM, I don't care. I need quotes, and I also want to quote this myself. Me. Okay, I'll ask out our other office if they can provide that. I talked this out other office in the night, and we made the decision to ignore the LM and just fly it because of a shutdown in production would cost them thousands per year. Day two. LM, you have quotes for me? Me. Sorry, I done. Because of time constraints that I explained to you yesterday, we shipped this already. LM. What do you mean you shipped this? I need quotes before I make a decision. Me. As I explained yesterday, if I had waited for quotes, we would have lost a day. You would have made a decision, letting us know a few hours after our other office and the supplier are already gone. Then to do customs and flight plus customs here at destination would have taken another two to three days. Your production would have been minimum to be halted for one to two days. We had no other choice but to ship immediately. So on day four, they had their parts at the plant, but the logistics manager was not getting the freight cost approved, which means we were not going to get paid. I got the, I got a call from their purchasing department, who I get along great with, PM. Hey, Emmy, I have this PO request on my desk, and my LM is telling me you never gave him any quotes. I'm sorry, but without quotes, I cannot approve this cost. Me. Hey, PM, here's the situation. Your LM screwed up and was going to shut down your production because he has no clue how international freight and custom works. If we had listened to him, he would have shut you down. We decided to ignore him because of that, and here's our email correspondence. I attached all the emails, even one where he said we should have shipped FedEx or UPS, which would have taken over a week to deliver. PM, looking through the emails and laughing, I understand I'll push this PO through, but from now on, just do what he says, even if you know we'll shut down me. Okay. So just the following week, we then had the same issue again with some other material. We gave him quotes, which took one day and let him make a decision. Not being completely malicious, we even warned him we need an answer immediately so he would not have any problems. He finally gave us an answer by morning of the next day. This meant we'd lost two days already. Then we had to do the customs clearance at Origin, which takes another day. Day three, material goes to the airport the next day. Day four, flies the day after. Day five, arrives at destination airport. Day six, since it's the weekend, no customs clearance till Monday. The LM has already shut his production down by this point. Monday, customs clearance. We get pulled in for customs inspection, more delays. Parts get finally delivered to them on day eight at the end of the day. His production has been down for two days already, and they're way behind. After this incident, we all get pulled into a meeting with the plant manager, LM, and PM to explain the mayor F-up that happened. LM tried to blame us for everything and says we took too long. Luckily, I have everything in writing informing him what happens if we do it his way. 
We get dismissed, and LM get reamed by then plant manager. From them on out, LM hasn't questioned us since when we tell him it needs to be done a certain way, he accepts it. You told him you could save him thousands by providing the materials in time to not shut down. He chose to delay the materials and shut down when they didn't arrive. His stubbornness cost thousands of dollars. And our last story. How my father outplayed the greedy HOA president and sold the land for a huge profit. Hello, Reddit. I want to share with you a story about how my father got back at a cunning HOA president who tried to deceive us. This all happened in Oregon, on land that our family has owned for several generations. My great-great-grandfather bought this land when his family moved here from the Czech Republic. There was a farm, woods, a perfect place to live. But, as often happens, the family's interests changed over time. My father became a lawyer and inherited the land, but he didn't have the time to manage it, so when the time came, he decided to sell it. The process was going smoothly until we encountered the HOA president, who was also the owner of a construction company. He seemed like the perfect buyer, offered a good price, was local, showed great interest in developing the area, but things didn't go as expected. John, have you seen this letter? Asked the lawyer one day, browsing through emails from the HOA president. What letter? My father approached closer, and his expression darkened as soon as he read the words on the screen. The HOA president called him an idiot who doesn't understand the real value of the land. He said he'd make millions by building a shopping center, a gas station, and a new road, selling all the wood. Probably he sent the letter to the wrong address or accidentally attached another correspondence to my father's message. I don't know the exact details. My father was furious, but he's not the kind of person who acts under the influence of emotions. We're canceling the deal, he said quietly. His voice was calm, but I could see how disappointed he was. That same day, we started looking for other buyers. Fortunately, we didn't have to wait long. Another company that valued nature offered an even better price for the land, planning to build luxury cottages while preserving most of the forest. When news of the deal became known, the HOA president tried to contact us to resume negotiations, but it was too late. I hope this was a good lesson for you, my father told him in their last phone conversation. Respect and honesty are more important than short-term profit. So guys, remember, always stay true to your principles, even when it seems like the world is against you. Sometimes one wrong step by your opponent can lead to your biggest triumph. What's the worst nightmare for a greedy HOA president? When residents start paying their dues with kindness and smiles. With such rates, we'll not even change a light bulb in the entrance. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.